My name's Sophie Scott and I'm a Professor of Cognitive Neuroscience at University College London. Um, in my lab we study the human voice and how our brains control their production and also how our brains decode the information in them. I've been looking at human vocalisations of emotion for a number of years. Most of the work on human emotion expression and recognition is done with faces and the people, I had colleagues in Cambridge who were looking at this and they wanted to look at another modality because reviewers were saying, well, it's all just faces, you don't know if it's faces or not. So I thought, well, you know, I do voices, let's have a go with emotional voices. And as soon as you start looking at positive expressions of emotion, you start to find laughter just runs away from you. It's universally recognised, it's incredibly robust. You can do lots of different things to sounds and really alter how people can hear them. It's very hard to do that with laughter, even if there's just the slightest suggestion of these bursts, ha, ha, ha. It almost doesn't matter what's filling that sound up, people hear laughter. Laughter is a kind of non-verbal expression of emotion, so it belongs to the, the kind of class of sounds we make when we're in extreme emotional states like screams or um, sounds or sort of gasps of surprise. And laughter's, um, like those other sounds, it's more like an animal call than it is like speech. It's not doesn't share the complexity of normal spoken language. And actually laughter itself is specifically more like a different way of breathing because you, you breathe very differently when you're laughing. You just do big contractions of the ribcage and just squeeze air out of yourself. Laughter in evolution is associated with social bonding and play. So although we tend to link laughter to amusement and humour, its primary role, its initial role, and what you find in common wherever you find laughter across other animals, is that it's a, it's a socially bonding behaviour and it's a behaviour you do when you are playing. We tend to think that we laugh because of humour and jokes. Um, Robert Provine's shown that if you ask people when do you laugh, they talk about jokes and comedy. In fact, if you look at people when they laugh, we laugh when we're with other people. It's a completely social behaviour. You're 30 times more likely to laugh if somebody else is with you than if you're on your own. And what that means in practice is where you find most laughter is when people are having social interactions. Um, so again, within those social interactions, we're mostly still not laughing at jokes. We're laughing to signal agreement and affection. We're laughing to show that we know somebody and that we like them. And we're laughing to show we understand them and we understand the references they're making. And sometimes we are laughing at jokes, but most of the time we're using our laughter in a very kind of nuanced way to do a lot of the social aspects of our interactions. Most social laughter is fake laughter. You're not, you know, you've got some control over it. Um, if you look at how people time laughter in conversations, they don't laugh randomly throughout, they tend to laugh at the ends of sentences. They laugh in a very coordinated way. Now that's not helpless laughter, that's, you know, that at some level is, be, is part of your voluntary brain systems that you use to communicate. Now I'm not saying that, that makes it bad or horrible laughter, but it is strongly suggests that it's not, um, you know, it's not uncontrollable laughter. If you can, in a difficult situation, use laughter to make yourself both feel more positive, make yourself both feel less stressed, then that's a very nuanced way of using laughter to actually negotiate your, themselves both to a better place in terms of emotions. And that's really interesting because it's not just a signal there, it's something you're actually using to regulate emotional state and regulate it in a positive way. So I think this is really rather exciting. This suggests that it's not just a social emotion that we're signaling to each other, it's something we can use has an important function. It's one of the reasons why you feel better when you've been laughing with somebody isn't just the, oh there was a joyful thing to laugh at, you've actually you've negotiated yourselves out of something that might have felt worse. But it also may link into another use of laughter which is people trying to laugh in difficult situations to make them feel better. And that's because if, we, if it has become something that you're quite good at using in certain relationships to improve the mood, maybe it's something people try and use in other situations and if nobody joins in and no one feels better then you're left with one person laughing and it's not clear why they're laughing and that's often I think what we mean by nervous laughter or uncomfortable laughter is somebody trying to use laughter to improve a situation and no one joins in and back as in, in Leminton's experiments if, if only one person's laugh, laughing no one feels better and that's what happens with nervous laughter no one's feeling better but it is possibly or probably a strategy people are trying to use to do this emotion regulation, take a difficult situation and make it feel better.